2000 GMC Yukon XL 1500 ST with over 572,000 miles on the original engine. Slam GM all you want, but they can build a dang reliable truck if they really wanted to. Yep, it's time to finally cover the GMT 800 truck platform. I've covered the contemporary Ford and Dodge of this era, and now we finally come to the truck that I grew up with, easily my favorite truck of this era. And yeah, I could have gotten a GMT 800 example with low miles or something cool with the quadrasteer, but... This is the essence of a GMT 800 truck, approaching 600,000 miles. Just look at this boat. It's dirty, there's dents, there's rust, it leaks oil from various spots, interior panels creak and buttons disappear into their homes, lights are constantly on on the dash, wires and lights that no one knows where they go to dangle underneath the said dash. But it starts up and it travels for hundreds of miles without an area complaint. This is the proper GMT 800 life. This, to me, is peak GM truck. Styling isn't over the top, it's stupidly overbuilt with reliable engines that require just basic maintenance, and big swing in technologies that GM had no business in offering. <coughs> Quadrasteer, <coughs> Protec composite beds, <coughs> hybrid technology in the mid 2000s. The GMT 900 that followed just felt stale and bland compared to the GM's new Millennium truck. The K2XX given that boxy styling of the GMT 900 that it deserved, and the less that's said about the current T1XX trucks the better. But the GMT 800 truck, in all its dirty, rusty glory, stumbles on, boldly stating, I didn't hear no bell. 572,000 miles at the time of recording and on the original 5.3 liter Vortec 5300 LM7 to boot. There's no reason that this truck should be soldiering on like it is. Yeah, I'm sure there's plenty of Fords and Dodges of the era with high miles, but in my experience, I've seen so many more of these early aughts GM trucks that surpass 300,000, 400,000, and 500,000 miles on the original engines. Transmissions? Yeah, they may be iffy. The 4L60E transmission didn't exactly enjoy abuse, and this particular truck received a junkyard donor transmission about 100,000 miles in the past. And that transmission itself currently has an estimated 225,000 miles, and it's currently making noises that make the owner, Brian, nervous. But if it wasn't for his fear of the transmission exploding in the Rockies, he'd be performing a cross-country trip later this year to attend an IMSA race in Laguna Seca, no problem. The rest of the truck is just that resilient. And I just realized I wax poetic without actually describing what the heck the GMT 800 platform is and what exactly a GMC Yukon XL 1500 SLT is. Well, the GMT 800 happens to be the new for the new millennium truck platform for GM, replacing the boxy GMT 400 trucks of the 90s, which in themselves were known for being one of the first modern pickup trucks. While the GMT 400s carried a lot of their old truck and SUV names over, it started a transition over to what we now know of GM's trucks as SUVs. The Tahoe name would be first introduced in 1995, replacing the old Blazer name and introducing a four-door model for the first time. GMC's version would be introduced at the start of the GMT 400 generation as the Yukon, leaving the old Jimmy name with the midsize offering. But GM would continue to sell their version of the Chevrolet Suburban as the GMC Suburban. Not the most original name, and by the end of the 1990s, it was clear that model needed an identity of its own. So for the year 2000, the year of the SUV introduction of the GMT 800s, the pickup trucks would be debuted a year earlier in 99, GMC would rebrand their version of the Suburban as the Yukon XL. Again, not the most original name, but at least it kept the brand in-house. GM would also use the XL name for the long wheelbase third row version of the midsize Envoy just a couple years later, so that would help with branding overall. 
The GMT 800 generation also saw an old new line of engines, as GM's venerable 5.7 liter LS1, 7.4 liter L19, and 6.5 liter Detroit diesels would be replaced. The replacement engines would be the 5.3 liter LM7 in this truck, the 6 liter LQ4 V8, and the 8.1 liter L18 big block respectively. The Mexican market would retain the LS1 until around 2005 when it was finally phased out. 1500 models got the venerable 4L60E 4-speed. 1500 Denali's got an upgraded version of that transmission called the 4L65E. 6-liter 2500 models got the 4L80E. And big block 2500s would get the 4L85E. 2500 models would also get bigger brakes and beefier axles to help bolster tone capacity. For the Yukon XL in 2000, you got three trim levels. The base SLE, the middle SLT, and the luxury model Denali. Four-wheel disc brakes were new for the GMT 800 trucks, as was the coil sprung rear suspension for the SUV models. 2003 saw the introduction of four-wheel quadrasteering as an option for the Suburbans and Yukon XLs, which is simply amazing considering this is GM of all companies. Like, the most conservative automotive company on the planet. Other tidbits about the Suburban and Yukon XL would include that this was the last generation that you could get GM's large SUVs with barn doors. The hatch had become a more popular option as it had provided better visibility with an uninterrupted view out of the back, but I'd argue that the barn doors are easier to load in and out of. On top of not having to worry about the lifespan of the large hatches, gas shocks failing at some point. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> when that happens, carry some uh, vice grips. I would describe the driving dynamics at this point, but it's kind of pointless for such a vehicle. This is a 22-year-old truck with almost 573,000 miles. Of course it's not going to be considered good in any sort of sense. On-road handling is best described as firm yet floaty. The coral sprung suspension is surprisingly planted in the corners and is forgiven over large bumps on roads. This plays well into it being used for road trips and daily driving, as the pickup truck, especially one of this era, would beat you up with its leaf spring rear design. But the old steering box is extremely floaty, especially on country roads, and the throttle response out of the old 5.3 liter isn't exactly exciting at this point. It's more than adequate for a truck this size, and it trucks long well, but eh... From stoplights, it does feel kind of lazy at this point, which, 572,000 miles, it's... <laughs> You're not gonna get a rocket ship here. Anyways, aside from that, this truck serves its owner quite well as a road trip machine that also doubles as an occasional camping rig. Brian has dubbed it the Yukondo, and he has built a full-size bed platform and shelf that he camps out of at racetracks with. He's installed an aftermarket stereo and amp for camping tunes, and he engineered these flip-down shelves that he can enjoy his meals with. He said the biggest issue with these crude shelves is the magnet hook that they hook to does have a tendency to fall off while driving down rough roads. But as a cheap racetrack camper, it serves him perfectly well. Also, the roof of the GMT 800 Yukon XL is strong enough to hold two large adults without fear of denting or collapsing. He does intend on eventually installing an actual deck, so any fears of slipping and falling while shooting the action at the Rolex 24 from his home away from home are unfounded. He picked up the Yukondo a couple of years back for $2,800 from a man who was downsizing his fleet in preparation to a move to California from North Carolina. At the time, the 550,000 mile GMC wasn't exactly high on that gentleman's list of keepers, so Brian snatched it up before the troubles began in 2020 and used car prices would surge. Other than some small issues outside of the potential big issue, the transmission, it's been a great trick for him. Other issues include the right front speed sensor being out and not being able to access it at the moment due to the fact that someone in this truck's past life has managed to strip the brake caliper bolts. So yeah, that needs to be addressed because he also does have to do a brake job at some point, eventually. So, <laughs> yeah. Thank you, former mechanic of this truck. <laughs> the other two issues that he plans on getting to is the ABS light being on due to a possible faulty controller, 
which is a known issue for high mileage GMT 800 trucks, and the rust that's over the windshield. It's bad enough now that when it rains really hard, rainwater will run underneath the windshield and onto the dash. He does need to get the windshield replaced due to a rock hitting it during his last Sebrin trip, but he will need to address the said rust while it's out. Overall, this truck is the perfect example of the GMT 800 generation GMC Yukon XL, let alone any GMT 800 truck, be it a Silverado, a Tahoe, or an Avalanche, or Suburban. As the years go by, these trucks have stood the test of time and spat in the face of neglect. The interiors fall apart, lights will appear on the dash, the vortex running less than ideal, and the occasional failing 4L6TE. But they just run, run, and run. I've seen way too many of this generation GM truck with over 300,000 miles and often surpassing 400k. As this one approaches 600k, Brian has grown excited to possibly push this old truck to a million miles. He's over halfway now, but he and I expected to easily hit that with the old 5.3. He may need to swap out the 4L60E a couple of times, but... <laughs> GMT 800. 2000 GMC Yukon XL 1500 SLT with over 572,000 miles. Like most high mileage GMT 800 trucks, it hasn't heard no bell. Have a good day, everyone. Thank you once again for watching another episode of Wookie Drives. Huge shout out to Brian of Pineville, North Carolina for the use of his old GMC Yukon XL for this video. As mentioned in the video, Brian is a freelance motorsports photographer who often photographs at IMSA events. So you can check out his work via Carolina Roots Photography on Instagram. Also check out his Twitter at NCGearhead for his overall gearhead shenanigans. If you happen, happen to live in the Charlotte, Mooresville, North Carolina area and are a fan of the show and, and have a car you'd like to see on the show, email me your submission to wookiedrives at gmail.com. That's right, submit your car to wookiedrives at gmail.com, and hopefully it can be on the show. Follow my Facebook page at facebook.com slash wookiedrives for channel updates. Follow my Twitter and Instagram at wookieautomotv for just overall rants, raves, wookie shenanigans. Follow the TikTok for the once in a blue moon's brain poop video that I put out that I feel don't fit on this channel. And finally, be sure to give the video a like, share with all your GMT 800 friends, drop a comment with some feedback. Any feedback or inter interaction is good for my small channel. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button and hit the bell for notifications for more wiki drives like these. Thank you so much for watching and have a good day. Some people have a passion for driving. One such person is engineer Chris Marr. For the all-new GMC Yukon XL Denali, Chris and the team paired a 320-horsepower V8 to full-time all-wheel drive for a mix of power and agility found in no other SUV. To quote Chris, who says you can't teach a big dog new tricks? Introducing the GMC Yukon XL Denali.